And welcome to another exciting episode of Tales from the Podcast. I am your host, JB, here with, of course, my lovely co-host, Mr. Jack Hunter. So, Jack, I think you we know, should every, go ahead. Every, 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 what's, uh, what, what? No, go, no. go, 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 go. No, I, I just love the adjectives you keep using before you introduce me. I mean, this one was perfect, but I'm not the lovely one here. The lovely one's in the green room. I'd I say 100% the, agree. You know? Yeah. My that buff co-host, your yeah, buff you, co-host. Is... You you pretend, but let's get to the I... inner. Let's get to the really really fun part, man. We well, got yeah, an extremely it. awesome guest to introduce for this episode, because on our, our other show, Two G One C, our uh, Two Guys mm-hmm. One Crypt, we recently did Ernest Scared Stupid, which is a yes. childhood favorite of um, quite a few of us, man. So let's go ahead and introduce our special guest for today, Miss Shea Star. Hi, Tales from the Podcast. Hi, Hello. Shay. It is Hi. such a delight to have you on. I'm very excited to uh, actually have this chat with you. It's it's definitely a lot of fun. Um, we got our friend Ron tuning in. He says, lovely, like a little girl. I think he's talking about Jack there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sean's letting Whoa. us know that he's watching, but won't be messaging. Okay. okay. This is, this is going to be fun, Justin. You know... Uh, I'm really excited to get roasted like we do every week uh, with with a celebrity on our on our show that I grew up watching on several shows and films. So oh. I appreciate this courtesy, Justin. Thank you so much. You're, <laughs> you're welcome, I guess. I, I really don't know what to say mm-hmm. other than, you know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's people us. like it. It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, By the way, that, that was Chuck tuning in. Uh, he's uh, he's cool. Up, he Chuck? says he wishes he could be on. Chuck is my co-host for Two uh, G One C, and uh, he interviewed or not an interview, but he is the one who actually reviewed Ernest Scared Stupid with me, which oh. dude, may I add, still a total fucking blast. But you know, I guess let's go ahead and get started with it because I wait, went wait, ahead. First, are you are you offended by curse words or anything, Shay? Because we can tone no. it down. Okay, no. perfect. There you I go. should okay. pretend that I am, but I'm definitely not. Okay. okay. I'll try not to <laughs> I, use any myself oh. to set a good example for the kids. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, if there's well, children watching this show, then, well, their the, parents. Their parents no, I mean the kids, the, the kids who are loitering behind oh, the oh. doorways. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. And luckily, um, my four-year-old's favorite movie is It. There is not too much that I think you could say that is. Uh, oh my god! Going to be and my daughter's. My daughter's I favorite. I still movie find is, It scary. It's Child's Play, the new one. Actually, she loves it. I have Chucky dolls and a Chucky poster here in my studio, and she says, "My Chucky, my Chucky died." Oh. That's the only thing that was upset about the whole movie. She didn't care about he's killing people, but he died at the end. She's like, "My Chucky died." It must my be Chucky. genetic. It, it very well could be. Yes. I, I can't argue that at all. But since this is your first time on and we like to make our interviews so much fun and try to make people uncomfortable, <laughs> we set up a wheel of random questions and we're going to go ahead all and right. uh, give you a couple of those if you don't mind. Okay. I've got okay. to put on my glasses and be old now because I can't really see the screen with those tiny words. Okay. Oh, well, whatever. I, I, I'll read them off. Don't worry about it. Oh, so I let's go ahead it. and uh, spin the wheel, Jack. You want to give us some manual music there? <laughs> I, I expect a game show music. Oh. <laughs> spin the wheel on Tales from the Podcast with Jay a Star. 
let's do it as it takes forever to spin the wheel. It's not a three second <laughs> timer. I can't dude, change dude, it. That's like seven seconds. That's a long time. I know. I know. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh, here, here we, we go. go. Do you right. believe in cryptids? Oh boy. This is a really tough question because you're going to have to explain to me what cryptids are. Oh, um, so I guess uh, this is probably something I'm really, really familiar Bigfoot? with. Loch Ness Monster, the Jersey Devil, Alien? the Dog Man, oh, goblins. Got it. <laughs> um, here in Louisiana. Okay, let me think for a second because I'm actually very into this question. What's my favorite? Like, What's well, I won't say imaginary, but mythical sort of creature. Is that right? Mythical. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Fairies are definitely in there, like any of the Irish lores and stuff, like oh, those kinds I mean, of things. If, yes. If well, I would say fairies, except fairies are, fairies are also known to be mischievous. Oh yes. Uh, which I don't always appreciate. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm gonna say mermaids. Mermaids. Definitely I, mermaids. I honestly didn't see that one coming. That that's. I mean, that's live under the sea. In magical sea uh, wonderlands, sounds really, like really Atlantis. fun. Befri exactly, Atlantis. Does that mm -hmm. not sound amazing? Befriend whales. What if you end up turtles? one of those mermaids though, where it's like the top half of you is the fish? That's not well, then how mermaids <laughs> are. So don't be ridiculous when talking about mermaids. <laughs> you know, speaking of mermaids, Shay, did you? It was I think it was back in 2012, 2013, where I think the History Channel did this whole like mockumentary on it, and they make they're like real footage of mermaids under sea. That was the worst <laughs> CGI ever I've ever seen in my life, and you had people freaking out about this. And I'm a filmmaker, and I'm like, I can make better looking stuff on ms paint than what the, what they did it that sounds was, very bad i will not it, be it, checking that out it's it, what they do for I, I shark would, week and i fell for it and i also fell for it when they said ryan phelps was gonna swim and race a shark and <laughs> they get me every oh year yeah oh it was boy. a cgi thing then too <laughs> but, that's tough that's a tough break is. for everyone propaganda. all right let's do the next shark question week. all okay, right let's ready. go ahead and spin the wheel again here um, we go the slowest wheel in the world. Well, it's, it's only slow, like when it gets started up, and then it's like just keeps going and going and going, and then just stops. It, it, yeah, really no, we got to work on. We got to work on that. This is the only one you can really buy. Oh, that's true. Okay. It, it doesn't give you a lot of options to own one. All um, right, a fun one. I'll ask it. Right. I'll ask. Okay, Bigfoot versus Wolfman. Who wins? Hmm. Well, you'd assume that Bigfoot would have more brute strength, but True. then the Wolfman has the incredible canines that can tear to shreds and the claws. I'm going to say that the Wolfman causes greater damage like much more bloody damage but that mm -hmm. bigfoot is able to um pummel the wolfman to the point that the wolfman escapes leaving bigfoot in very bad shape but still alive well, that's my answer the full detail on that look at the creative i, I love it out. i, I wow. love it right. and our <laughs> and our commenter, yes. Chuck, all he has to say is Wolfman has nards. <laughs> Anybody gotcha. get that reference? Right, that... Do you get that reference, Shay? I don't know what is being said. I assume it's something. Monster that... Squad? One of the greatest. Oh, Monster Squad. Oh, my God. <laughs> I loved Monster Squad. Yeah, that's Man, where that line's Squad. from. <laughs> so wow, that I takes guess... me back. All right. We'll do, uh, shows our age one more of these later. questions, huh? Oh, let's let's do some more. Yeah. This is fun. Uh, All, right. <laughs> All right, so hit it. Seriously, I can't do that for like seven seconds straight, dude. I, I just, think you should. Just do the Mario. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's.
Let's see what we got here. Oh, 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 oh. I was asked this earlier, actually, on the live. Oh. So what is your favorite band? Or I guess who is your oh, favorite I band? I mean, I'm a musician. I play my own music. I have so many friends who are musicians and and I've gone to so many of their shows and I support their music. And I honestly have so many favorite bands. I love music so much, but it's sort of like asking what your favorite flower is. They're all so extraordinary and so beautiful. And I feel so happy that I get to listen to such incredible music over a history of it. It's like what even genre, a classical rock, jazz, uh, folk, it's, I love okay, music. Uh, no, what about, okay, mainstream, your favorite mainstream? Main, well, like what's mainstream? Like, are you talking about current pop music? Jack is wow. really into pop music. You know what, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm- I, A 35 year old man that's obsessed with boy bands? I mean, do you want to give me like my favorite amongst three or something like that because this is this is a topic i can go on about forever okay so like my main my favorite mainstream band yeah uh is nickelback everybody hates them but i love them okay so that's no i yeah. think she had i think she had a good enough answer so yeah it she doesn't did. matter she, she pretty yeah. much covered all points on there it's like she doesn't have a favorite she's really into all kinds of music and it's hard to I choose really something am. like that and I 100% understand that completely. So and, I guess and just because and, and just because I love boy bands does not define my sexuality in any way, shape, or form. Justin, there's I a ton did of not great say that it boy did, band man. You're just the one songs. who wants to defend it. There's lots of great pop music. I mean, that's why it's pop music. Oh, yeah, right. it's pop. Uh, it's pop. Uh, heavy, Susan. heavy yeah. music is is that like heavy metal? You mean or more or just like Hard rock. Uh, because I think the answer to both is yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's say for, because it's Chuck saying it, it's definitely uh, like your death metal. So it's I hard. have a one of my one of my old bandmates. His dad played in like a death metal band that we used to go see, and it was amazing. So much fun. Such a great crowd. We had an incredible time going to see those shows. So yeah, all the way. That's By awesome. the way, uh, my friend Michelle, uh, she's a live streamer and she uh, she's here. So she's hi, hi Michelle. All hi, right, Michelle. next question. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's go ahead and uh, actually ask you a few questions oh. now. Okay. So yeah, I yeah, guess real, yeah. Guess I definitely probably have to. I feel obligated to start off with kind of like your basic starting question of what really got you into acting. Well, I was a little girl when I started and I was in ballet class since I was three and I wanted to be a ballerina and I loved going to the ballet and I just always took the performing arts really seriously. And when my family moved to Southern California, when I was seven, uh, a friend of my parents said, oh, you know, your kids seem like they might do well as actors. And honestly, from my very first audition, I was like, I love it. I belong here. I, I just loved it. You know, it's not that I was necessarily, um, I wasn't like super successful as a child right away. I worked, but I wasn't like a child star. I just was working and I, I loved the work so much. You know, I loved being on set. I loved becoming another character and it's I still do so I was um it was just something I got into really early because it was the right thing for me that's really really interesting for sure I'm gonna go ahead and um because there's two of us we're gonna alternate questions a little bit okay. so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Jack for a couple of questions all right uh my question is uh well it's kind of a story too because in 2013 I saw a film that promised a part two, and I have not gotten that part two. And that film is a film you were in, All Cheerleaders Die. Yeah, yeah. Where, what, what was the story with uh, you coming on board with that? And why hasn't there been a part two? 
Well, the story is that the directors, writers and directors of All Cheerleaders Die are Lucky McKee and Chris Sievertson, who are um, incredible filmmakers that I've worked with quite a few times. Um, I did a movie called The Lost, which is based on a Jack Ketchum book called The Lost that Chris Sievertson directed and wrote and Lucky McKee produced. And um, and then we just, I mean, it was an incredible experience. It was a great film. And we all just continued to work together in a lot of different forms. Um, so they just called me and asked me to do that part. And, and a song of mine is on the All Cheerleaders Die soundtrack. Amazing. Where yeah, part two yeah. is, Jack, sure. is really a question yes. for the filmmakers. That is something well, you would have to I ask need the to filmmakers. Touch the film. <laughs> I I would be more than happy to offer my services, and uh, but I know I know I've said it before, but Shea Star, I'm a filmmaker as well. Um, this mm -hmm. year, I had the uh, I had a number one horror movie in America. Uh, we actually made history by being the only and first re uh, movie released during COVID in theaters. And what was um, it? Because of uh, it's called Horror Nights. And the reason you probably haven't heard of it is because Hollywood gave us the shaft and gave the number one spot to The Wretched, which was a great movie, but no mention of our film whatsoever. And they really just shafted us. And uh, but we were the we we're independent. We didn't have a big, huge studio backing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, you know, you know how Hollywood is. And uh, I, I do. Uh, yeah, but I do. yeah, I would love. I, I would. Yeah, I would love to get in touch with those guys and be like, yo, I want to be a part of this. Like, I love, I literally, I, I loved that movie, everything about it. It was just, it, it was, it was a good film that needed, you know, for the time, you know, and mm -hmm. there's still fans of it that want that part oh, yeah. too. You know, they, 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 it says it at the end, you know, um, careful about no it's not chuck chill no i <laughs> Jack learn, likes to talk I, about himself no, <laughs> he I, can't help it it's the narcissism no, in him. <laughs> no, i have to say i'm a film i mean i have to say that because i have to say who i am some people don't know it's okay it's i it's, thought it's, you were it's gonna ask show. a question i did ask a question she answered it so you go you're next <laughs> all right fair enough i'm glad now, you love all cheerleaders die so much because they are great filmmakers, and I just love to hear anybody who who supports my friends, my artist friends. It's it's awesome. So thanks, Jack. You're very welcome. And the one-liners from that film, oh, it was so cold, man. It was so cold. <laughs> like, really? Like, what? Like, obviously, the guy didn't know what. It, uh, it's, it was great writing. Perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> it, it was a really good movie it was a really fun one too for what it was i i will admit yeah. that for yeah. sure i had a lot of fun with it um i guess my question kind of going back to a little bit of what you did with that movie especially with the soundtrack i noticed that you also performed with the um was it star trek as well mm -hmm. and i believe there was another one too that you were on the soundtrack for um oh yeah and, shameless uh, well yeah yeah shameless. the show yeah. Yes. Oh, what season? What season? I just uh season for Shameless. That was uh it was in 2014. So that uh, was, yeah. well, no, that's what that's when that's what she acted in there. That was Yeah, like, I was in the show yeah. performing a song um that Amazing Grace. That's right. Uh, one episode, the episode's called Iron City in 2014. So if you look up the episode for Iron yes. City and listen for the song Amazing Grace in there, that is Shea Star performing it. But anyways, back Amazing. to the question I was going to ask is um, with those um, actual soundtracks that you've done, and I'm sure that you've also done other kinds of performing, um, oh, yeah. which would you, would you say was like your favorite to work on? Um, my favorite show to work on? Well, musically, like doing the soundtrack and, you know, not really oh. being in front of the screen so much, but actually being able to, because I will just like looking through some of your pictures and stuff. I noticed that like music is obviously a very big part of your life. Yes, it is. So I figure, you know, you, you would have some interesting stories about which one was your favorite. Maybe one was a little bit more fun than another one to work on. I mean, primarily what happens if I do, like on All Cheerleaders Die, that was a song from an album I released that Chris asked to use 
for the movie. So that's, it's a really like, here's, you know, here's the link to the song, wow. here you go, here's the file. So it's a pretty straightforward process. In terms of, in terms of music for movies, I have done some soundtrack stuff. I actually r more recently um, wrote and directed a short of my own, but my plan oh. was to score the entire film myself. And then I had a baby, so yeah. Was that the Wandering little... by chance? No, Land of Wandering I did prior, and that was. I mean, that was. Such I couldn't an find incredible... that one at all. I look. So Land of hard Wandering to is to on YouTube. It. Land of Wandering literally is on YouTube. You can just go oh, Shay after my... Land of Wandering, and it's it, right it, there. Really? He yeah. His his head just went. Like that, I yeah. saw. Yeah, it's it on did, YouTube. I, like, I, I looked for like two days. I was like, I guess yeah, it's not it's, on there. <laughs> it is on there. It is I definitely could, on there. Jay, he really has been watching like all your films. Like I've been, I'm in the middle of uh, doing like filming for commercials and stuff, and I would get text messages and phone calls. Hey, I just watched Shea Stars The Lost, Aww. or you know, like all this stuff. So, and I apologize that I couldn't. I haven't watched that. I but I did. You know, I've seen you on you know Third Rock from the Sun, uh, Boy Meets World. You know, all those things. I I grew up watching you, but. Like I've just been busy with my, ah, with my you oh, it's funny. Yes. So funny. Look at that. This oh, yeah. if anyone does not know, Boy Meets World was like, I don't know, the the pop culture TGIF phenomenon, you know, back it in the really 90s. It really was. It really was. And and I I will say this, I was not a fan of Girl Meets World. I I just I couldn't get I, it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it's, it. You see, it's, I'm, it's just. I'm sure yeah. it's amazing, but right, I haven't actually right. watched it. But going back to your question, um, oh, yeah. Land of Wandering was originally, I was making a record with this artist and producer called Chris Price, who's an incredible musician. Um, and we decided to make a record together. And then this artist and director, Sarah Wilson, I had done a movie with her and I had done um, a song. Actually, I had done a song for another film of hers that was really, really fun. We did this very jazzy version of My Funny Valentine. And then she wanted to, you know, I asked her if she would do a music video for me and she said, let's just do the whole album. Let's do a film. So oh, she yeah. came to my house and filmed the making of the record and it really became its own thing. We did this incredible, you know, it's like a 27 minute film of making the record and these vignettes for each song that were kind of taking each song and going into a new world with each one of them. And it's, you might not see it if you have parental controls on your YouTube because it's a little, mm. it's for adults. Mm. No, well, no, I don't have parental control controls. Control. I, I, I might have yeah. just figured. I don't know. I must have typed something wrong because, like you know. said, like I, I was watching everything. Like, I mean, like literally, finding the lost was kind of hard for me to do too. <laughs> finding the lost. Yeah, that one took me a little bit to find, but once I found that, that was actually, I thought that was actually a really, really good movie. I mean, I just googled my own name. And clicked videos and Land of Wandering comes up on YouTube. Get him, Get him <laughs> Get she him got in me. Face, Justin. In I tried. Your... No, I just Thanks. wanted to, I just wanted to check. Right I just right. wanted no, 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 to I don't, check I don't in case you. like it had been removed or something, but it hasn't. But yeah, The Lost is it's an incredible film, a bunch of incredible people, and we had such an amazing time. And I mean, Chris Sievertson and Lucky McKee are dear friends of mine to this day from that experience. Just great well, filmmakers. That kind of ties into like uh, the next question I want to ask is, what was it like going from doing stuff like Ernest and Third Rock from the Sun, and then growing up and doing something as different as The Lost? Well, the that, Lost, that is way different than anything I yeah. ever saw you do before that. Yeah, it was definitely a departure from from what my career had been up to that point. But I got the script mm -hmm. and just immediately went. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Even I just the, uh, no, what? like even like with with some of those scenes, you were like, did you know that was coming, or was that stuff that was like decided? We talked on about that. 
we talked about all of those scenes fr right up front before we got even into the process of like, are, do you, you know, of me getting offered the movie, mm -hmm. we talked about those scenes up front. Um, I felt that it was not about, you know, when you're talking about nude scenes or you're talking about um, sex scenes, mm -hmm. there's always the question of, does this have something, is there a reason or is it just, okay, now the girls take off your clothes. And there's lots of movies where the point is to get the girls to take off their clothes. But I read that script and I thought, oh, this is so nasty. Like everything is so dark and awful. And I just, just love showing it. how deranged the guy was. Yeah. I just That's... thought it was such a sad, depraved story of a kind of peek into a certain part of our culture that's real. Yeah. You know, it's based on a true story. It, what? I didn't know it was yeah. based on a true story, but it's like- based um, on a true story. Not to and get it, like too behind the scenes, yeah. but you know, my good friend Jack here, he's he, he's a great guy, but you know, like some certain things mentally aren't the best at times. There's, do you know what I mean? Th things happen, but um, I, I watched that movie and I was like, this right here is a really deep, kind of messed up movie in parts man I'm like i don't yeah. think you this is suitable for you to check out like he it's did. it's a really dark movie it really it is, is a dark movie it really is it's not something i wow. would ever recommend to a young person to watch <laughs> or anybody well, I, who isn't in a very clear mental state it's a it's a dark movie there's no um like redeeming joy happy ending it's mm -hmm. It's 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 hardcore, but well, I was also I, I, really excited about that at the time. I and let me let me just kind of uh, play off of Justin here real quick, just to bring you up to speed. I'm a, a military veteran, so I suffer uh, with like PTSD, anxiety, uh, depression, and a lot of those symptoms and everything else. So that's where I, he. Like why he right? I, I just that. gave it so short just, form. You know, so. I'm well, that's a good okay. friend but, because. No, but that's yes, something that yeah. I can understand. I mean, there's a lot of movies that mm -hmm. I won't watch because I know it's going to affect me in a negative way. For example, you know, I think this is something that happens to a lot of a lot of women when they have children. Once I had my child, I could no longer watch anything that involved a child being mistreated or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. I yeah, just like when, it's like you have yeah. to cut off certain parts of of what's in the culture just to I mean I have to do it with the news sometimes. It can just get overwhelming Absolutely. and you start feeling depressed and anxious and like you can't take it anymore and overwhelmed and it's like so don't watch it then. Mm -hmm. I do the right. exact just, same thing. I, I completely agree. Like I tried to watch The Woman in Black and in the first 20 30 minutes you know, the kids in that film, I don't know if you've seen it, but um, yeah. I mean, it's not a plot, it's not, it's not a reveal, but the, there's kids that die in the very beginning because of this woman in black. And, I will never um, be watching I, it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't watch it. Like I, I, I bought both Blu-rays, one and two, but when it got to that point, I was just like, I can't, I love my babies too much. And yeah. as parents, you know, we have to guard what we see, you know, so we don't, we're not always fearful of our stuff exactly. with our children, exactly. you know, and, um, you know, so yeah, as a parent, I get yeah. you. I totally get you. It's like, why, would you why would you consume yeah. something that's going to mess with your mind? Exactly. There's lots and that's why of I can't watch movies uh, out there. Oh. I feel like that's an they, indirect they attack at me letting stupid. my four-year-old watch it. Clown eating all no, those kids. No, but that, <laughs> no, no, there's, there's a difference. You know, but there's a difference with it. It is a clown. You know, it's not like, I mean, it's supernatural and, and creepy, but it's not like. I still won't watch it. Straight up. I watched it as a child. Oh. And I'm still traumatized and I'm never watching it again. When the new it came out, I was like, I don't even want to see the trailer. <laughs> out of here. Uh. <laughs> that, that, that's, um, that's a little bit surprising well, considering you know you were in the lost which i would say is a way darker film than it is but it's different well, i didn't, didn't like i doubt then. that i would go see the lost if i hadn't been in it and because i was mm -hmm. in it 
you know, it's you can never watch your own movies like an audience. You know what I mean? Right. And Absolutely so right. for right. me, it's not so terrifying because I was there. I was shooting those scenes, you know, and those were my friends. And it's wonderful to yeah. see the performances and be so proud of those actors. But it's not like I don't forget, you know, that it's me. I get that the energy of that film is really intense. And I feel that when I watch like the final sequences. But, you know, look, some people don't have a negative response to horror movies. I cannot, I just can't watch them. Right. It's so right. funny that I ended up, you know, doing them because I cannot mm. watch them. There are, <laughs> there yeah, are that seems to be a common I trait. But I don't you can know be what it them. is, but, but, but yeah, you can be in I can, them. I can, but, I can but do you can't them. watch. Okay. Because no. I mean, well, that kind of answers I, one of our yeah. questions about asking if you were scared of the trolls while filming Ernest Scared Stupid. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> no, you know, you're you're there behind the scenes watching their, you know, the whole right. makeup process and all the different. It's like no, it scared me. <laughs> yeah, well, was, it's supposed to. I was, oh, now, um, did did you know that two of the trolls mask from? Ernest Scared Stupid were reconstructed masks from Killer Clowns from Outer Space? I, I did know that, but I don't think I knew that while we were filming. Oh, okay. I don't oh, think I'm that wondering. I got... Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that's... That, that, that's crazy. That's it. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's it. So uh, what was it like being a child actor working with the legend Jim Varney? Well, Jim was... I, it might be surprising to hear this, um, but he's an intellectual. He is an incredibly smart man who had so much knowledge about so many topics. He was incredibly interesting to listen to. And, you know, when he would be talking like with my father on set and I would, I would get to hear them just getting into all of these amazing topics. And he was incredibly kind and he had a very slow, gentle, like a cowboy kind of, the way you'd imagine the perfect cowboy. He, that was kind of his vibe, just really easygoing and kind. And he really went out of his way to make us laugh and make us comfortable and was just so sweet and like the most wonderful uncle that you always look forward to coming to visit. Aww. He was. He was wonderful. That's that's so sweet. Like and and you know that's what you would get. That that's 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 definitely the vibe from all the Ernest films. You know yeah, that, that yeah. came before that and afterwards. Um, that's now, what every my, my, fan wants to hear too. Like yeah, everybody like is, especially R H who right. grew up with those movies. Like, oh yeah. Like nowadays, you hear all these bad things that everyone's done all the time. So it's it's nice yeah. that at least. Jim Varney is safe. Oh, he's a great guy. Great guy. Yeah, and uh, obviously a lot of our fans are like, they feel the exact same. Everybody really, really loves Everybody Jim does. Varney. Everybody you know? who, you know what, who loves his work and everyone who worked with him feels the same way. Yeah, and you know what's sad is like, uh, it was like, a, I think it was a year after he passed, I was looking, um, I used to collect the Got Milk photos back in the uh -huh. day like through people magazines uh -huh. and i found a cover of him on it and he's like i'm beating cancer or something or overcoming and then seeing that literally like right after he passes away i was just really yeah. kind of upset by that i, I he was yeah. and, and you know like and i watched some of his comedy from in the 80s and 70s he was so he wasn't vulgar that's what i love no. about jim no. he was he was like he would make those little you know, little adult jokes, but they were never yeah. like, you know, uh, Richard Pryor, you know, he was very sure. reserved and he was such, oh man. Um, I do have another question about him on set. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, well, actually in the movie, you know, at the time, the nineties were totally different, even in the eighties. Was there any talk about like, why are these kids hanging out with a 45 year old man? <laughs> I know, like, looking at it now, I'm like, I would not let my children hang out unless it was his uncle or something. Like, was there any? I mean, I think that no, there definitely wasn't. And I think that within the earnest universe, 
Yeah. Everybody knows that he's harmless. You're absolutely right. You're right. That that is really that's that's deep. Dead. Yeah, that <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm sorry for even asking that question because that No, that, that, I, I, I I think it's actually a reasonable question. Um because I can see where you're coming from that today people would be like, does that seem like parents maybe wouldn't let their children just because it seems weird? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. Yeah. Justin, you can ask some questions now. I've talked enough. I apologize. No, you're 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 completely fine, buddy. So mm -hmm. I guess my next one's gonna be um you know, like like I said before, growing up I watched you in a ton of TV shows. Um I watched Quantum Leap. There's some other mm -hmm. things like I, I probably shouldn't have even said that live. Wait, wait, wait. Quantum but... Leap. You were in Quantum Leap? Hold up. You were in Quantum Leap? I yeah. love that show. <laughs> great show. It's a great awesome. show. Okay, sorry. 100%, you know, but we got, you know, even things like Star Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, you get your third rock from the sun. Mm -hmm. Bam. But with, with all these shows that you've done, and, you know, even going farther into your career, you know, um, was what you did, Cold Case, The Unit, mm -hmm. um, The Inside. I mean, you've been all over, Days of Our Lives. Um, mm -hmm. Was there any of those that was, um, did it stand out a little bit more for you? Were any of those a little bit more enjoyable to work on than the others? I mean, the truth is that I've been incredibly lucky and I've been able to work with incredible people. The thing is that doing Third Rock, I did that show for a number of years. And so I was really able to see how it worked day to day, week to week, month to month. And watching actors like the actors on that show work. And f the, so the way that that, that show worked, you know, a, a multi-camera sitcom is you rehearse for, you know, several days and then you shoot the show. So it's kind of like a live performance. And watching the actors, watching actors like John Lithgow and Jane Curtin figure out, mm -hmm. you know, how this how the rhythm of words work and how jokes play back and forth. And, um, you know, and you've got an enormous number of writers on that show who were like from SNL and were just the masters of comedy writing. And so not only am I getting to see these incredible actors working, but also these incredible writers who come in and finesse one line, one word, or no to emphasize this syllable instead of that syllable, and it changes it so enormously. It's a masterclass on comedy and on live performance and on writing. It was an incredible experience to work with all of those people for that length of time. Right, well, I guess that kind of answers no, my uh, next question about how was it working with John Lithgow for so long? <laughs> like well, he's go. an amazing actor. So it's yes, uh, he is. definitely, you probably learned quite a bit just watching him. I still learn from John Lithgow and I haven't worked with him in a million years, still remembering things that he did, choices that he made that I didn't necessarily get at the time. But now I go, oh, now, you know, he's, he's an incredible actor across all disciplines. So oh, yeah. yeah, watching him was very lucky and he is the most sweet, generous guy, like just so warm. I mean. So he was nothing uh, like his character in Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are some similarities, but. Yeah. No. You know, every oh, few wow. years he kills in threes. So. No. Other <laughs> so than Jack, that. Yeah, other, other than that, he's a completely yeah. normal guy. It's, it's cool, it's, and it's probably and it's probably people that deserve it too. So it's okay. It, it make, makes it okay, just like Dexter. <laughs> all yeah. right, I'll go ahead. Um, I'll pass it over now, to when Jack. you're working, all right, cool deal. Great sway, get great way to move into that one. Thanks, appreciate it. Um, so when you're doing multi-camera uh, TV shows and you have to do it in front of the live audience. Are we really seeing like on TV? Because I've never been to a TV set. I just done films. Is it is it like is it the the laugh track real or is it the actual audience that's laughing along? So this is something that's so air? funny to me because I've constantly heard this thing about the laugh track, the laugh track, the laugh track. You know, it gets 
you see it in mm -hmm. reviews of of sitcoms now just like oh the laugh track i hate the laugh track and i having been i've done a lot of sitcom television and i've mm -hmm. literally never heard a laugh track used you have a studio audience they're right there yeah there's all right. these people that are laughing and you and that's what gives the energy to the performance and to the jokes and and like I mean, yes, there were shows like if you watch the Brady Bunch and there's a laugh track where yeah, there's no yeah. audience, you know. Obviously, yeah. But no, I actually and I've you know been there and heard that one weird laugh of that one <laughs> you know strange person, and then heard it on television at the same time. So I don't know where this laugh track thing comes into play nowadays. I've yeah. just never, I've never seen it used on a show that I worked on. I think I think you can really hear it, and and it's been like, I think publicized, but like on the Big Bang Theory when it was big, um, they you you can you can hear the diff the, the same laugh track with their jokes. Oh, I, I don't know. really? Yeah, yeah. It, it's just one of those That's technical depressing. things. <laughs> it is, but the thing they have they have it they have clips where it's like they sh they show the clip without the laugh track, and when you watch it, it's like you're right. It really wasn't that funny. Like you know, because you want to laugh. People know when laugh. they're supposed. The to experience laugh. that yeah. I had on sitcom mm -hmm. television is that if a joke that should get a laugh didn't get a laugh, the writer would come running in and be like, "All right, say this and this instead." That's wow. Again. There was really? no right, right let's pretend spot? it's funny. Oh, on the spot all the time. That's they're, awesome. They're, so they're the, the whole idea of the applause listening. light is bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, they definitely, so, you know, the audience, there's like, there's always a stand-up comedian who's there to get the audience warmed up and laughing before okay. the show starts, mm -hmm. to kind of like yeah, get them ready. Because, you know, if, if you ever go to to live comedy, you'll see that it takes the audience a little while. Mm -hmm. so they'll be like chuckles, and then they'll start laughing, and then the whole show will be amazing. Right. Um, That's so why the big names up. have openers. Exactly. Yeah. So they do that with sitcoms as well. They have a stand-up comedian open the show and warm up the audience. That's really uh, interesting. The unsung heroes of live TV show that you don't You got know. that right. Yeah, I wonder oh. if they get paid scale or what. How does it work for that stand-up comedian? <laughs> I haven't <laughs> actually asked any of them <laughs> what they're getting paid. <laughs> so well, I, I wouldn't know. suggest anybody go and ask them. That's kind of rude, but I'm just curious. Be like, do uh, they get paid I acting or do they get paid stand-up? I, I got oh. a $75 joke here. Can I use that one? Do, or do you want me to use the $15 <laughs> one? You know, uh, wow, yeah, yeah, Justin, why would you? You can't ask pay. Can't I will tell you, know, some of the, some of the, um, you know, the audience like warm up stand up comedians that I've seen are famous stand up comedians now. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Wow. That's could you awesome. name one of them? No, I don't know if that's like part of their story that they tell publicly that they did that. So fair, fair enough. Um, I'm I'm just that, curious yeah. who would have gotten a start doing that. It's it's interesting to know that, you know, possibly somebody that I could really be into nowadays started off doing yeah. that. You yeah. know, that, that's just I mean, an interesting not, thing. None of the comedians that I've seen doing that job are like starting out. They're all really skilled comedians. It's not like a job I for some schmo mm -hmm. who's doing an open mic night, yeah. you know, at the local pizza place. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a real job. Oh, so they were already well, established. Yeah. I don't know if they were like hugely famous. They weren't hugely famous at that time, but these were well-known comedians for sure. Like in oh. the comedy circles. Yeah. Very interesting. I could almost say like, I'm probably, well, probably on that time, maybe I would say Kevin James had to be one and Ray Romano before he got Everybody Loves Raymond. You know, I, I would, I they, they've had to, yeah, I don't know. But I know you can't name drop. I'm just thinking. Because <laughs> these guys are like idols now. I know. Well, like, I guess, I'm stupid. I'm fishing. Yeah. Well, let's change. Let's change it I'm for fishing. real questions then. So, okay. Real question. I, I'm curious. Is there any way that we can get you to do the Elizabeth scream from Ernest oh. Scared Stupid? But that scream. What a good experience. They were so happy that I could scream so loud. I'm very proud of that scream. There she is. <laughs> Classic scream. Um. 
if I didn't have a toddler sleeping in the other room, I probably still wouldn't do it because we live in a world <laughs> where women screaming at the top of their lungs can elicit a certain kind of response that I don't want. Um, Fair enough. That's, that's a very can, good observation. But can I, I can definitely still scream like that. You really? betcha. You never Ooh. lose it. Once you've got it, you never lose it. <laughs> was, that, was that part of the audition when you auditioned for the Ernest Scared Stupid? They say, hey, scream for us. I don't think so. I don't oh. think so. That was a hidden talent. You just oh, yeah. brought it up. Uh, oh, that is amazing. I just remember, that was a very I just remember good scream. on set, they were like, okay, scream as long and as loud as you can. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and they were so happy. They were so happy because they got to do the whole pan of the camera with me screaming the entire time. They were very happy. It was a good day. That 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 whole movie is awesome. Like, how was it just going through the entire thing of filming that movie? Working like you you already talked about working with Jim Varney, but mm -hmm. just working on that movie in general. How, how was it for especially being as young as you were? Well, we shot that movie in Nashville. And I don't know if you're familiar with um, the Southern people. I'm from they Missouri. Are, so. They I, are very friendly. I'm and, in Louisiana. <laughs> well, there you go. I yeah. had, I mean, working on the film itself was amazing. The entire crew was amazing. Just everyone was so nice. We had such a positive experience. And... And also Nashville is such a cool place. Yeah. The food, I mean, I didn't know when I went to Nashville that there was gonna be such amazing cornbread to be had. <laughs> and all of the people that I met were wonderful. It was just, I mean, I was also in a new place and I get to, on my days off, like we could go to explore and you know different locations and there's fun things to do there it was so so fun our friend sam mason he's in la right now so he had to do his little shout out of la in the house what <laughs> also in LA. yeah he's uh, uh, he's um dating uh peppermint patty from the peanuts and they're getting ready for a peanuts thing that's going on on the 10th actually so if anybody wants wow. to check that out yeah, yeah, go check out my my page. I've shared it on there plenty of times. Or check out Sam I Am Mason, and he'll send you all the links you need to see all the peanuts stuff that's going on. The very but, first um, the reunion of all the voices together in one place. Amazing. Amazing. Very cool. Yeah. yeah very cool. cool. So uh, going back to the Ernest Scared Stupid, and um, knowing that you are really into music and everything, how was it working with somebody like Eartha Kitt? I mean, I worship Eartha Kitt. So I was incredibly starstruck, even then. I worship her even more now, but I already worshiped her then. And uh, I was incredibly starstruck. She had just come off, I, I can't remember if it was another film or what she was doing, but she had just arrived from New Zealand and was just did not have time for me being like, I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Incredibly professional, uh, really easy to work with, and totally magnificent in every conceivable way. I mean, she's a she's a diva. She's a goddess. I aspire to one day um, be worthy of Eartha Kitt glancing at me in the spirit world. She's so and amazing. She, I love her was, so much. She was Catwoman in Batman. I'm just seeing. Yes, this now. she was. Like, yeah, but I, 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 I was talking more version. because of Shay being into music. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah. Eartha Kitt's musical career is just like what she can do with a song, the way that she can create a story with very little movement, just using her voice and the way that she enunciates certain words. Like, give me a break. I have studied her. She is an inspiration on every single level. I I can't even believe I got to work with her. That it's definitely even, like I'm jealous of myself that I got to work with her. She's so amazing. Yeah, absolutely. That's hell. That's a hell of a thing to put on your resume. And you know, just put like, when you put your resume out, you just put like, yeah, here's me and Eartha Kit together. I was with, I worked with you Eartha Kit. Just that's it. That's all I have to say to anyone yeah. ever. Yeah. Don't don't say like, another word. Damn. Just 
Nobody can argue. Yeah. I just feel like we were best friends. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> we best yeah, there. You know, yeah, uh, Stanford I wish. Yeah, that too. I wish. Yeah, worked with her. Worked so with this her. is actually uh, oh, from my yeah. co-host of our Two Guys, One Crypt, which was the show we did the Ernest and Scared Stupid on. He has a question. He's curious if, with all the kids in that, um, did everybody get along while filming it? Okay, I have kind oh. of a funny story, which is that the boy, the lead boy, um, got teased so much for that moment, for that kiss. That <laughs> I didn't realize it was that moment. I didn't do that, that purposely. <laughs> he stopped acting altogether after that. That is why yeah. I could not find yeah. him, why I went yeah. to reach out. He got teased because because much. why I'm jealous kids are, of that moment. Kids are, <laughs> you know, ten year old kids are mean, I guess, or they were in the early nineties. Um, yeah, he got teased mm -hmm. and and stopped acting. But everyone else, yes, I mean, we all got along great. Like, you know, it's first of all, most of the kids were local. And lo oh. and southern children are taught manners. We are. Oh, so yes, those kids were charming and friendly and polite. And in fact, the boy who plays the bully, mm -hmm. his little sister moved to Los Angeles a number of years back and is one of my close friends. Oh wow. So there's still isn't that weird? There. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. You, you know, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, Justin, we need to get with Shay and have a full on earnest, scared, stupid reunion of all the actors. Even, <laughs> even, even. The well, guy. Oh, my God, dude, that you don't even understand what you just said live. I'm just saying. You <laughs> should do it. Has it been done? Probably not. Can we do I it? Mean, maybe. The, well, the main stars are dead. Yeah. Well, obviously. But I mean, the kids, man. Well, you know, they did a they did a 25th anniversary reunion um, and I couldn't make it out to Nashville. It was just it was it was sort of short notice and they were being very accommodating, but I couldn't make it out. Um, but they did a, a 25th anniversary and uh, where they did a big, you know, they showed the movie and I sent a video and um, oh. it was really I think a lot of the a lot of the local crew and cast were out there for that so that was really i'm sure that was really nice that's really really cool how did that you get really cast into that with everybody else being local that's that has to be well, a little different well i mean that happens a lot honestly with films that they'll cast the stars in la or new york and then if they're filming on location, they get as much local talent as possible because then they don't have to fly everyone in and get them hotels for two months. So Fair I, enough. you know, I, it was a normal process here. They did the casting of the, of the main characters here. Very interesting for sure. Well, Jack, do you have any other questions that you want to go ahead and ask in here? Um, what is your favorite style to sing? Oh, uh, I love doing standards. Um, because when you're taking a song that's that's been sung so many times and in so many perfect ways, it's so fun to see if there's any little secrets that I can unlock. Um, mm. That's really fun. And also just, you know, there are so many incredible standards that are perfect songs. And I just love to sing a perfect song. But honestly, anything, that I can yeah. turn into, you know, and make it my own. I've done, I don't do a ton of covers, but I've started to do more. Um, and I mean, I'm trying to think of like what the last, the last cover that I did that was really fun was um, a song called Aggravate and Papa by Bessie Smith. That's like a very old fashioned song about, you know, um, a woman chastising her cheating man and mm -hmm. how she's gonna shoot him if he doesn't stop. And uh, 
you know, it's it's just really fun to take those old songs and and bring them forward and connect to those those ideas that seem old fashioned, but are really just using old terminology to say the things that we all feel. Like mm -hmm. every woman who's been cheated on has the exact same opinion as the protagonist of the song Aggravate and Papa. <laughs> mm, fair. W what's your uh, singing? What, what's your singing range like? Uh, you know, soprano, alto, baritone, or tenor? No, I'm an I'm an no, alto. Yeah. Um, so an my alto. voice is pretty deep for what you expect really? for a woman. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, m stylistically, I do tend to fall more into like it's easier for me to sing songs that have been originally sung. If I'm going to sing in the same key, it's easier for me to take mm -hmm. a song by a man and sing in the same key. Oh. Wow, yeah, interesting. Cool. Is there any place yeah. that all of our listeners can go and actually see some of these covers and check out what you're doing musically? Um, on the as far as covers, most of the covers that I've done have been live, and I don't think that they're uh, available. I, there's definitely some live performances on YouTube, but I would definitely tell people to check out the Land of Wandering movie yes. on YouTube because it's it's live recordings that we did in my apartment um you know and it's a it's a really cool little film that's really interesting now do, do you do all the editing and everything with that too then? no Especially no no with the audio no, no, or? No. um sarah louise wilson she's an incredible incredible painter and filmmaker and playwright and director she's she does everything um she shot the film and edited the film and um is one of just one of my favorite artists to collaborate with. Oh, very, very cool for sure. Jack, did you have anything else before we go ahead and start to wrap things up then? No, uh, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure and I'm, I'm happy that you've enjoyed or hopefully enjoyed our banter of yes. ours back and forth. Um, it's been really nice talking with you guys. Yes, it definitely it, has. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I, I can't, oh, 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 yeah, Mr. Feeney. What was it like working with him? I mean, William Daniels was a, a, a consummate professional. He's very like proper in a way, mm -hmm. you know, um, but lovely and really the kind of person who really sees you when you talk to them, which is oh, not yeah. that common, right. um, but right. just a really lovely guy. And then he was our, you know, he was our SAG president for, sometimes so a lot of respect for him oh. and mm -hmm. i'm assuming you're sag correct you're sag yeah sag after one union now when, yeah i remember it was a big deal back in what 2012 2011 yeah, it was a big yeah, it deal was, it was a big whole thing Yes. All right. So I went ahead and I posted that link out just so everybody knows so they can go ahead and check it out so if you Thank do want to go and check out the land of wandering go ahead check out our youtube channel check this out and uh Not for give kids, it a like though. There's adult yeah. content in that movie. No children allowed. There's naked ladies in it. Okay, I'm definitely going to Google that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> later. As you can tell, we do a lot of 90s stuff, so we're kind of used to a lot of nudity. So it's <laughs> it okay. comes no, with I mean, the territory. Okay. You know, and and like, you know, when it's needed, it's needed. And um, you know, like I'm 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 not the type of Shut up, Justin. Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna shut up. I, you know what? I was gonna have some respect, but you know, I'm, I'm just thinking of our last tales from the crypt episode we did, and oh, you know what? Nudity, how it was added in there and had no nothing to do with anything nothing, other than just yeah, a it was scene just there. Boobs. Like it's it's yeah. It, it, uh, sometimes they're cash grabs, you know, for uh, horny teenagers. I got no and, problems and, with boobs in right. however they want to be. Me right. neither. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Anyways, Shay, I really want to thank you so much for coming on. It's been a blast and a lot of fun. And you know, hopefully, uh, if you have any other projects coming on, maybe you'd want to come on again and talk about some of the stuff. Um, Definitely. About, thank you for having me. Of course. And uh, talking about some of your projects, too. Um, do you happen to have anything else that you might be working on now? Like, I know you've, you've had a child now, but I'm assuming you might be getting into the swing of things again soon, maybe? Yeah, I do have this movie that I this short film that I wrote and directed that I will be eventually finishing and putting out into the world. Um, it will also be 
adult content. Just oh, yeah. interesting. Who doesn't? Yeah. You have a Facebook user saying, "Who doesn't love boobs?" I don't yes, know. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's Chuck. <laughs> somebody who has somebody who has a little problem, probably. Yeah, exactly. That's it. For sure. um, but that's well, what I'm working on. I've started, started doing my own. Started doing my own projects mm -hmm. a fair number of years ago. So that. That film will be, you know, hopefully coming out in the next year. Um, I have a couple of other things that are too early to talk about, um, but I'll be announcing them as soon as I can. Oh, that, that's and, amazing. Uh, where can people find you, Miss Shay? Find me on Instagram, shay.aster. Right. Um, I'm easy to find. I'm the only one. Right now. Thank you. And, um, and, and I'm not super. I'm not super incredibly active right now on social media just because there's like not that much going on. And I don't it's, it's Instagram drama. when I make it's lunch all drama every day. And yeah. But it's definitely yeah. a good place to see yeah. what's next. I I thought you were pretty active. I saw cool. there, there's pictures. <laughs> you have more than I do. There's pictures. <laughs> there's pictures. I post I have posted pictures. There's right. past things you can go through and see. Right. So I am a little curious, though, looking at a lot of your pictures. Is it, is it somebody very close to you in your life has to be a photographer? Oh, I have lots of people in my life are photographers. Like, like I mean, everything that you have posted looks like a professional photo shoot, like on a regular wow. basis. It is Thank amazing. Thank you very much for saying that. I do have a lot of professional photographers in my life. You know, there's so many. I mean, Los Angeles is crawling with like the best photographers. So yes, they know how to take pictures. I have a lot of them. Well, everybody needs to really go check out her Instagram. It is well, amazing. Well, thank you very much. I'll be happy to welcome all of you. Awesome. All right. Thank well, thank you, you very so much, much for the talk. Oh, of course. Anytime. Um, yeah. If you want to stick around afterwards, <laughs> feel free to. But I'm going to yeah. go ahead and start dropping people and get to our outro. So, I'm going to head out again. and... Yeah. Take care of my little dude, and I'll see you guys oh. next time. Have fun. Thank you again Bye. so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Well, that was really fun, man. I had a blast. Absolutely. Yes. She, she's such a sweetheart. And um, I, I, yeah, that, that, that was great. She's, um, she's really, you know, it, it, you know, an, an icon in, in the, the earnest, world and in 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 our lives from the 90s i mean she was literally a part of every pop culture show of the 90s you know oh, that was, made the 90s stick out and she was that's part of everything that i watched growing up and loved man like yes and and you failed to say you had a crush on her in third rock from the sun i did not fail <laughs> i know what i did <laughs> I, I know what I did and I, I might have failed to just flat out say it but you know yeah. when she mentioned the kiss I said that I was jealous so. yeah obviously I think we all were as as oh definitely kids. She, she's um, an amazing woman and has an amazing career for sure and um, I, you know and for I'm all really, the listeners out there really go check her out I'm really excited to find her um on uh, her her music. I really want to check that out, and especially with the all cheerleaders die. Like, like I really, I need Shay. If you're still there, I gotta get in touch with these guys. It's like, I want this part two done. Like, I want to. Like, oh man, that would be amazing. I want to read not, the script at least. You know, just I doubt they even made one. Oh yeah, yeah, they had to have had a script for it. They have part two coming soon on on the end of a film. They already we're planning on filming it. So something must have happened. Really? Um, Didn't Super Mario Brothers, the movie do that? Um, no, they just led in with a teaser for the sequel that never was made. They never said Super Mario Brothers 2 coming soon. They never said sure? that. Well, Kung Pao did. Oh, Kung Pao did for sure. Kung Pao. <laughs> There's a lot movie. of movies that do that and it never goes anywhere. But let's oh, go ahead I, and wrap this up, man. Okay, yeah. So, you know, get, thanks everyone for checking us out, listening, checking out what Shay has to do and everything. Go check her out on YouTube. Watch her um, short for Land of the Wandering. The link is in the comments. It, I haven't seen that one yet, but just judging by what she did with The Lost and pretty much every single thing else, like, like Quantum Leap, the Ernest Scared Stupid, the fucking uh, Star Trek, like 
she's a very talented and an amazing artist. So check her out, like it, share it around, man. Um, and uh, Jack, unless you have anything else left to say, man, let's wrap this bitch. All up. I have to say is the crypt is closed. Mm -hmm.